Welcome back. This is episode three of Cooking in the City. Today we got some summer favorites for you. We're doing baby back ribs. We're doing an extra cheesy mac and cheese. I got a watermelon agua fresca coming your way. Thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have shown to these videos. If you like what you see, drop comments, subscribe so you don't want to miss anything. Turn those notifications on. Also, watch the whole video. There might be a hidden uh, discount code for the website in here somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and get started on prep. First thing you're going to want to do with ribs, you're going to want to flip them over bone side up. We're going to need to remove that membrane and any excess meat that we don't need to use here. Uh, the best way to do that, grab a paper towel, make a little cut on the top portion of the membrane. So that way you have something to grab onto. And we're gonna try to cook these, these bad boys slow and low, get some fall off the bone ribs for you guys today. So once you get a good hold on that, peel that all the way down the rib. And we missed half right here. Once we have that membrane removed from the bone side of your ribs, we're gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of trim work, get the, uh, the excess meat that's not rib off of here. I mean, you can save this stuff. We, we use it for broths, all kind of stuff. Um, you know, this is nothing goes to waste in this house. And trim a little bit of that excess fat off if you can. Now we're going to get to seasoning these things. Some people like to use mustard as a binder. Some people use olive oil, apple juice. There's all kind of options. That's the fun part about cooking ribs is you kind of make it your own. I like to use olive oil considering these. this is our infusion on this rib. Once you get that on there, rub them down. Get that olive oil all in there. And then we're gonna do a nice hefty coat of uh, some secret seasoning here. And this is gonna act as our dry rub while these things cook. We are doing a wet rib today, so we also have a barbecue sauce that we're gonna use later on. But while they're cooking, just a dry rub's all you need. And once you get that on nice and hefty, rub it in. Get a little messy with it, have some fun, you know. Make sure you get all of those little nooks and crannies and whatnot. Flip those. A little more olive oil. Rub that in. And then dry rub on the underside too. Get the sides. All those bones, rub that in. Once you've got your ribs prepped, seasoned up, your grill is sitting at about 275. You're going to want to go ahead and throw your meat on the grill. Let's open this bad boy up, set that off. Take this one, set that on. And then this is the easiest part of cooking ribs right here. Once they're on the grill, Keep it at 275, close it, and now we wait about two hours. We're gonna check on them maybe every 30, 45 minutes, give them a spritz down with a little bit of a secret mix that we use. A lot of people use like an apple juice, apple cider vinegar kind of mix. We're using something special that I brought. Um, but yeah, we just wait now. Vibing, yeah. me and my folks all good at sun is shining. Tell them my feet kicked up like I ain't trying. This is what I want to sum it, yeah. Gangs out here, let's run it, yeah. Five's out right here, 100, yeah. I've been on All right, now that it's been about an hour, we're going to check on our ribs. We're going to open this bad boy up, and we're just going to get them a nice spritz. Get that meat all nice and wet. You don't want anything to dry out. These ends especially, that's where it tends to dry the most at. And once you've given them a nice little spritz, time to close it and wait another hour. Sip it too soon, that pregame. Sign up on two, that three way. I just went fast like we late. What's going on? It's been about an hour and a half, two hours. We're gonna go ahead and pull these ribs off, give them some barbecue sauce, wrap them, toss them back on. So when you take them off the grill, go ahead and set them bone down first. We're gonna take some of this uh, secret barbecue sauce right here and go ahead and just start painting it on. Once we've got it all over the top, go ahead and roll them over bone side. And we're going to paint the underside also. And you want to make sure you get every little bit. Don't leave anything unsauced. You know we're all about the sauce here at XL City. So I'm going to pour a little bit of sauce under the ribs. 
Then we're going to take some of that magical spray we've been using. I like to make a little boat shape with the aluminum foil so it catches all the liquid. And this is just going to keep everything nice and moist for us. Make sure we don't get dry ribs. Nobody likes that. And then my wrapping method, I always go over, over, and then fold in, and then fold in. And just make sure they're nice and tight, and then we're going to get these back on the grill. All right, guys, so once we have our ribs wrapped, this is meat side up right now. When we put them back on the grill, we're going meat side down so all that juice can soak into the ribs. Make sure that they're nice and even on there. Close it. We're going to keep it at about 70, 275. We might crank it up to 300 here in about 45 minutes. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Many, many minutes later. All right guys, while we wait on these ribs to finish up, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our mac and cheese. This is a super simple recipe. Everybody loves it, always a crowd favorite. Of course, we start with elbow noodles. Go ahead and get those in some roaring, boiling water. Give them a little stir. Don't forget to salt your pasta. All right. We'll let those boil for a few minutes and then we're gonna get started on our cheese sauce. Watermelon agua fresca now. So step one, you need a watermelon. Step two, we're gonna cut this thing, cube it up. We're gonna blend it, add a few other ingredients. This is like four ingredients, it's super simple. You're gonna love it, don't worry. So you can go ahead and just chop your watermelon. It doesn't have to be like finely cubed or anything because we are going to be blending this up. You don't have to do anything special with it. Just get it in there. I'm gonna use about two limes per uh, helping here. You just wanna squeeze that fresh lime juice. I'm gonna go another lime. I'm gonna do Maybe like six to eight leaves of fresh mint. You stick that in the side. You're gonna do about a little under half a cup of sugar. Right at maybe a cup of water. That should be perfect. And then we're gonna give this a blend. So you can just put this screen right over the top here. We can grab our blender, carefully remove the lid, and then just pour it through the screen. And that's gonna catch everything that we don't wanna sip on. You might have to agitate it a little bit to get it to go through that screen. It smells wonderful. Go ahead and pour the rest over the top. All right, now that we've got that all sorted out, we're gonna set this in the fridge so we can enjoy it with our dinner. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start making our cheese sauce for the mac and cheese. So this is pretty simple. It's gonna start with about one cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna use some uh, deli sliced aged white cheddar. We're gonna use a cheddar mix. I'm gonna use Munster cheese, one of my favorites. I always go whole block of cream cheese just for that extra creaminess. Half a block of Velveeta Melt and Go. Boom. We're gonna put this on a low heat and uh, we're gonna bring that up to like a simmer till it's giving you some bubbles through it and then give it a mix. Go ahead and mix in our noodles and then we're ready to go. Now that we got our cheese nice and cheesy and ready, gonna add our noodles back. And we're gonna stir that all in together. We can take that off the heat for this part. Add some pepper, add some salt, continue to stir. 
all your mac and cheese in. <laughs> Once you've got all your cheese and your noodles incorporated together, go ahead and pull one of these little uh, aluminum pans over. Get this scoop. Oh yeah. Get that all here. And you could stop here. I mean, you could eat this. This is delicious. But what I like to do to get a little smoky flavor on it is give it a little wrap. But the way I personally do it, I leave a little opening here just so a little bit of smoke can get there. You get that smoked mac and cheese, that true barbecue flavor. And we're going to put this on right after we take our ribs off. You want to be careful. They're going to be a little warm. Just transfer them over. Time to throw our mac and cheese on just to finish it off, just to get a little bit of that smoke on there. We can move our ribs here, flip them over, and then you want to carefully unwrap them. You don't want any of that juice to necessarily escape out of here. I always go bone side up. And man, you can see that, look. Ooh, see how they're just coming right out? That's how you know they're done. We're slicing our ribs up, preparing them to serve now. They are so tender. Let's get this mac and cheese off. Very carefully grab that, transfer it over to somewhere safe. So we're gonna go ahead and plate it up. We got a couple ribs here. I'm gonna get a healthy scoop of mac and cheese. Maybe two, why not, you know? End of summer after all. And then a nice glass of this agua fresca. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to enjoy the rest of summer. Thank you guys for everything you do. Thanks for watching these videos. If you have any suggestions, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment, drop a subscribe. Hey, just drop it like it's hot like these ribs, you know? Do anything you want, but ultimately, thank you guys for everything you do. We couldn't do it without y'all. I'm gonna go back down to the lake and enjoy this meal. You gonna have to say your goodbye, I've been vibing. Yeah. Me and my folks all good at sunny side.